Christians and blessed to you once again, people of God, to the revelator once again. And hope in the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in the conference, the realms of prayer, the prayer realms, where I'm ministering in the spirit of intercession, where I am interceding in the way administration, and as I am presenting the realms of prayer conference, I'm also praying so that we are given the adequate knowledge, the understanding, the beneficence that is required inside your spirit. As the Holy Spirit ushers me at every step of the way, at every stage, to equip you inside your spirit so that you are given the relevance, the reference, and the significance of the Holy Spirit inside the conviction of your spirit. Welcome to the seventh segment, the seventh edition, the part seven presentation inside the realms of prayer conference in the season and the series the intercession assassin and praying that you are given the liberty and the freedom in your spirit to grow in your prayer life to go to go beyond in the things of the spirit inside your intercession spirit life and you're given the energy to continue praying even for others in the seventh segment let us get into scriptures in the book of luke chapter 4 verse 1 and in the book of luke chapter 4 verse 1 it reads and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those 40 days jesus did not eat anything meaning that in those 40 days jesus was not only fasted but he was praying 40 days non-stop child of God praying and fasting I can imagine even if you were to lock up yourself inside a room inside a house and you are given a task to pray only not including fasting but praying alone for 40 days and 40 nights if you are going to be able to complete 40 days praying consistently without seeing the sun but here we have one that has gone to a very deserted place and he has been led by the spirit of god to go to a wilderness and this wilderness is an isolated place I know that so many times when people read this part, they think it was just a mountain. This was a deserted place, a wilderness, where nothing fascinating or entertaining, where nothing that is eye-attracting, where nothing that is seducing can be found. And there he was praying every day for 40 days, non-stop. On top of that, he was fasted. You need to grow up in the spirit to reach those levels, but again, you cannot grow up in the spirit to attain such levels. It has to be by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, where one fasting, where one is consistently fasting for 40 days, praying, interceding, and during those 40 days and 40 nights while this Jesus was praying, I can imagine the warfare 
of different ranks of princes, rulers, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, how many voices that he was wrestling with, how many powers he was fighting with, how many demons he was dethroning for 40 days and 40 nights up until the last day, which was day number 40. Which the scriptures then say on day number 40, he was now hungry. Why? Because after 40 days and 40 nights, the fact that he is not only the son of God, but the fact that he came in the flesh, he was now hungry. That moment when you have devoted your life in prayer and fasting, that moment when you have devoted your spirit in the things of prayer and the devil wants to recommend the devil wants to come up with his own suggestions why because he has seen that there is a lack there is a need there is a requirement that is now ringing a bell inside your spirit it could be anger the same anger that jesus felt it could be lack in the sense that you don't have much when it comes to material belongings this anger represents a lack that can happen to any believer but that lack does not mean that you are poor there are moments of of nakedness in your walk with christ just the same as when one is fasting it doesn't mean that they are lacking one can be fasting but one has got plenty of food in the house but the fact that you have devoted your spirit you have devoted you have concentrated your mind you have dedicated that day because you want to pray and fast so you are going to restrain yourself you are going to restrict yourself from eating so that is the same thing with the life of a believer you are not always restricted because you are poor but because god wants to see how much strength how much resistance do you have against the devil for 40 days and 40 nights jesus has been praying and fasting and when the devil comes on day number 40 he comes attacking that very area that he knew that he, now i know that jesus is now hungry the devil will come and address those areas that are in need on day number 40 in your life you will come while least you are interceding on day number 40 you will come on day number 30 while least you are now feeling exhausted and tired the devil when he comes inside your prayer life he wants to come and search for those things that you don't have he come he comes to search for those things that are causing you to lack in a certain area but jesus is not lacking he is devoted in prayer he has subjected his spirit into prayer and fasting but the fact that he is now hungry on day number 40 the devil then comes and says if you are the son of god command that this stone be made bread on day number 40 in your life the devil wants you to address material things while least you are in an intercession you are probably in a one hour intercession and the devil comes and whispers and says do you even have money to pay rent this month why is you are in an intercession you are interceding you are praying the devil reminds you of the things that your wife has done the things that have caused you to be bitter the same things that have frustrated you why is you are praying and fasting the devil reminds you of how your husband is cheating why is you are on day number 40 the devil comes and start spelling those things that you don't have in life and even create comparisons inside your thoughts how come you don't have this and this you don't have a house but others that you went with at high school others that are your workmates they have now developed in those areas in that area all these are thoughts that are being brought by the devil inside your mind heart and spirit while you are praying on day number 40 day number 40 in your life 
It represents those moments when you have developed in prayer, when you have reached a certain level of prayer, when you have reached a certain level, but while you are, you are at that level, don't ever think that you are safe. It is the same moment that the devil comes with his own convictions and he says, if you are the son of God, command that this stone becomes bread. Why? Because I know that you are now hungry. I know that you now need bread. And Jesus answered him and said, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. When Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, before we can even talk about just the word of God alone, men shall not live by bread alone, but by prayer and fasting, because he already found Jesus praying and fasting without that bread but he believes that jesus needs the bread so before we can even talk about the word of god you already found me praying and fasting how was i surviving without bread so jesus is giving the devil a point of correction men shall not live by bread alone but by prayer and fasting men shall not live by bread alone by but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god in case you did not hear the word of prayer you did not hear the word of fasting but there is the word that proceeds out of the mouth of god it is what i'm now giving you and the word that proceeds out of the mouth of god it is to come out of a man that is prayerful it is to come out of a man that is consistently fasting this is why the devil had to wait for 40 days he really wanted to see are you able to continue praying as you were doing throughout the last 39 days before we can even talk about the last day number 40 that i have arrived are you able to consistently continue praying and fasting are you is there consistency that can be recorded inside doing whatever you are doing that is what the devil was searching for so he waits for jesus on day number 40 and jesus says men shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in just a moment and the devil said unto him all this power I'll give you and all the glory for it has been delivered unto me and i'll give whosoever i want listen to me child of god anyone that is so prayerful anyone that has prayed beyond limits any man of god that has prayed to a certain degree has once received offers from the devil but has turned them down and i'm one of them you don't just wake up in the morning without a prayer and the devil wants to give you offers the reason why the devil wants to offer you something is because he has seen the level of your prayer he knows that with the way that you pray you are going to dethrone his kingdom and if you have the capacity to dethrone his kingdom. He has to dilute your prayer by giving you offers. The devil knows what happens when Christians are given offers from the kingdom of darkness. They are diluted. They are diluted. They are not energized anymore in their prayers. This is why most Christians are now doing empty prayers. And the Lord says, with their lips they honor me but their hearts are far away from me why because they are praying why least their spirits are far away and yet jesus has been lifted up into another realm this realm is not the realm of praying and fasting this realm is no longer a realm of intercession this realm is now the realm where lucifer has been allowed by god himself to test jesus since you have been praying for the last 40 days I'm lifting you up to a realm of materialization. This is the realm that many men of God were defeated, especially prophets. They believe that the breakthrough of a, of a ministry comes through material belongings. And they've been lifted up in the second temptation after prayers and fastings. And the devil declares the material things of this world. And they fall for it. And do you know what happens when you fall for the second temptation? All the prayers that you're doing from day one, they are cancelled. 
Why? Because all the prayers that you are investing in the spirit, the devil is able to take all of them. Prayers, they are investments that are done in the realms of prayer. In the realms of prayer, there are investments of prayers that are continually banking up. And as they are continually banking up, the devil is merely waiting for an opportunity to come with offers. I don't know how many offers that I've declined. And while this you are declining those offers, it appears as if you are not wise, but this is the level of wisdom that Jesus said. Jesus knew that for God loved the world so much that he sent his own son, he sent him to save the same world. So that the same world through the same Christ would not get destroyed. It would not perish. But now the devil wants to offer him that world just to cancel the prayer that he did for the last 40 days. And Jesus, after seeing the plan of the devil, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Why? Because Lucifer wanted Jesus to bow down. By bowing down, what it means is that Lucifer wanted Jesus to pray to him. What the devil is fighting in Christians, in believers, in saints is their prayer. Their prayers unto the Lord, the prayers of the saints unto the Lord is what the devil is fighting. So he's trying to change the destination of the prayers. He's, the business of the devil is not stopping the Christians from praying. He wants to stop the prayers from praying unto their Lord. He is not stopping them from praying. He wants to divert the prayers that the Christians are doing so that those prayers, they become vain prayers that end in the realm, not of prayer, but in the realm of darkness. And Jesus said, Thou shalt not only worship thy Lord, but thou shalt, thou shalt pray only to the Lord God that is alive, and him only shall you serve. And he brought him up to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Remember, the temple is known as the house of prayer by Jesus. And that's, this is exactly where the devil then decided to bring Jesus. And then said, cast yourself from this position. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in your hands, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Why? Because there are many that have now tempted the Lord in their prayers. What is tempting the Lord in your prayers? You overuse, you misuse, you, you overspend money. You live a reckless life uh, and you have got that silly statement of saying God will provide. What is tempting the Lord? You fight against certain systems you provoke certain powers at a level that you have not reached and when you're in trouble you expect the lord to save you imagine jesus being the son of god he did not throw himself even though he knew that he had the power to call the angels to come and rescue him he didn't there are certain levels that you must never test god child of god you must never allow pride inside your prayer. Pride is not allowed in your prayer. In as much you're not supposed to allow last, the last of the flesh inside your prayer. The last of the eyes while you are praying. This is why when men and women are praying, they close their eyes. They are trying by all means to pray so that they can put their focus in prayer. They are not distracted by anything that is not related to prayer. Child of God, I'm here once again presenting the realms of prayer, the intercession assassin, the dimension of prayer, the season of prayer in the name of Jesus.